Welcome back to Desynced. My name is Nilaus and we are here again with another guide. This guide is all about this little dude here. This little dude, who are you? Well, you are the uh, the pinnacle of many hours of programming. So let's have a look at what you are. You are a ruined scout. So uh, we have a scout dedicated and this scout will be dedicated to finding all the ruins and solving them. So we're going to be doing, we're going to be talking about how the ruins work, how to do this. And unlike the previous episodes where I've been focused on sort of going light on the coding part, this is not going light on the coding part, but um, yeah, this is uh, something that, that I built and it actually works absolutely wonders. This can take care of all those ruins without any interaction at all. And it even has some kind of fail, some, a few fail saves as well. So uh, Let's dive into that. If you are interested in these kind of guides, be sure to hit the like button. That helps a lot with the visibility and letting me know that I should continue to make these kind of guides. If you want access to the save games and all the blueprints and all the behaviors, such as this advanced monstrosity here, then uh, you can pledge on Patreon and I give that access to save games, uh, behaviors, blueprints to all the patron supporters. So thank you very much for supporting the channel and the work I do here. If you are not a patron supporter and feel like, oh no, but I want this as well, that's perfectly fine. We'll go through it and I'll explain how it works. And then you can pause the video at a proper moment and recreate it yourself. There's nothing hidden about this. Before we dive into the programming part, let's understand how the ruins work because there are different types of ruins. These two ruins are of the type of robotics, so that's our faction, and that means those are the ones we can access immediately. There's another type here, the alien one, and they require some intel scanner, and also there's the human ones somewhere like factories and that kind of thing, and they also require some uh, alien, uh, some uh, intel scanner as well. So that's uh, something that's a bit later on, but so we're focusing on, on the robotic ones, and these are the ones we can access. There are two types of puzzles. If we go in here and access them, uh, you can either do the puzzle or you can deliver an, uh, an affected uh, circuit board to override it. And since we want to do it automatically in the, in the, with this build here, then we want to deliver the disconnected uh, the circuit board, infected circuit board. But uh, if you want to solve this, if you don't have these yet or you just want to solve it yourself, then there is also a trick to it. And uh, the trick is basically, and it kudos to, uh, to Everlist for looking at that, you basically want to, to click on the corners and then in this case, if you're looking at, at a situation like this, so you want to get down to sort of having singles. And then if you click on the middle and then you click on the side and the side, click on the middle and the side and the side, and then it's actually solved. So it, when you're, you want to move them as many as possible over to the solved location so that when there are singles, then you click on the middle singles and then on the corner singles, and then it actually solves it. Pretty, pretty neat. And we actually got a really good item here. Uh, the other kind of puzzle is uh, I found one that is nice and advanced and uh, you can spend a lot of time just mucking about with this. But the essence is the, the trick here is to make it easy is start from the outer edge because you know that this is not going to be a possibility because that would be on the outer edge. So once you start solving the outer edge, it's going to be a lot simpler in terms of just seeing what is actually possible or what it has to be like. There we go. And then that got solved as well. And we get some items here. But that's uh, not the way we do when we do automation. So let's uh, reset and get back to the start where we can uh, then talk about how it works. No, actually, another thing that's really important is that this will be a roaming one. So it'll be roaming all over the map. And that means there is a likelihood that it actually goes out and encounters some biters because it'll explore too far out. So the first thing we want to make sure is that it has some kind of failsafe so that if it spots within the radar range, any kind of biters, it notifies me, the player, and runs away. So the first thing I want to show you about this program, we'll go into the details of it, is this failsafe that if it gets too close to my discovered edge, then it will scan. You can see the scan is out there into the part that have, haven't discovered yet. Then um, it will do a contingency here. So it scans and then goes notify me that there is a bug hive right there. And then it starts fleeing, running away. So that's like a really good first start. Just if you see something bad, just notify me, run away. I can send my army over here to take care of that. And now it's time to dive into the programming. There are two ways that you can approach this. One is you can just copy paste it blatantly, let it go, and then it'll work fine. Or you can dive in and understand it. Then you can take some of the stuff I do, shake your head, improve it and make it better. I'm not a programmer, but this works. And when it starts working, I had the intention that I'm going to be streamlining it and optimizing the code as all programmers do. And then you go like, 
nah, screw it. If as long as it compiles, it's fine. And then we throw it in production and I give it to you, dear customers, and uh, then it's your problem if some weird edge case breaks it. Uh, but I'm sure that there are better programmers out there who will be taking this and optimizing it. And you're welcome to share your uh, your findings and your improvements in uh, the Discord. I don't want to make it too advanced, but uh, it's getting advanced enough as it is. So let's uh, start talking about how it works. The first thing I described was uh, the program flow here. It goes in and checks if there are enemies nearby. If there are no enemies nearby, it continues to the actual uh, work. If there are enemies nearby, it'll notify me. That's what we saw. Then it will copy the location of my home. This is my parameter set to home and then set that to our go to location and then it'll wait for two minutes before it uh, it does anything more. I have 120 ticks, whatever that is. Um, so that's that just means that it has time to start going home. If I didn't have this one, it would just immediately start going home and then loop back again and it would find the same one. So this is basically, basically the program saying, whoops, I have strayed too far away from my, uh, my, my sort of the discovered area. Now go back and reset to the beginning and start over again while notifying me, the player, that I should take care of biters in this area before the robot decides to come back out there. So that is the first part and that's sort of a closed loop as well. Then we get into the radar part and uh, the radar part has also kind of a fork. It has either it finds something or it doesn't find something. Let's look at the way that it scans here. This scans for an unresolved ruin of the type robot. If you don't have this, it'll scan any ruins and then it'll go to one of those uh, human ruins or alien ruins and then it'll get stuck because it can't solve those. So that's uh, very important. Uh, you have to set it to robot and these conditions have to be all true. If it then finds something, it sets the parameter four, this one, as the active ruin and then we can work from there. If it doesn't find anything, then it goes into a scouting pattern. And uh, the first thing it does for the scouting pattern, it resets the requested ruins, it resets the go-to location, and then it starts scouting. Let's illustrate how that works. And I'm just get over here because if I know that it's over in this location, it won't find anything at all. And uh, that should be a good place. Um, actually from here, because that's in the middle of base. So let's just start from here. And then if we start it, we can see first it scans for enemies, then it scans for something. It doesn't find anything. And now it starts scouting. The scouting works that it moves a bit in a direction and then it does, starts over again. Scan first for enemies, then scan for uh, for ruins, doesn't find anything, and then continue and scan. And if it doesn't find anything, then it scouts. And it works kind of in a spiral pattern around your, uh, your origin. It's pretty damn neat. So with the scouting pattern uh, solved, we can now look at the sort of the contingency we have uh, we've done. We have done the radar here, where if we find enemies, run away. If we don't find anything, start scouting. At some point, we will find something. And uh, this is the filter for the unresolved, the filter for the robot. Then we will find something. The what I will do is I will copy the value of the active ruin and copy that into the go to location. So it'll start moving towards that location and having that as the destination location. Then we get into a loop. You can see there is a big loop around here. So this will be repeated multiple times. And uh, we go into try to resolve the explorable. And where are we gonna go? We are gonna go from the go to register. Uh, that's where we, the target, because we're gonna go, this is where we're heading. Then we will be trying to solve it. If we, we can solve it, it works fine. That is the condition here. Or if we don't can't solve it, then it will tell us what's missing. So let's cover the missing part first. If should we cover the missing part first? Um, no, let's cover the the happy uh, happy case first. For some reason, we have the stuff that we needed to solve it. Then we pick up the location, the stuff at the location. We then set the new location uh, so that we start going there. Then we set our go to location to the home. So basically, that means now go home. I don't want to use the store location because then it kind of has a tendency to 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 want to go back there all the time. So I'm going to control it from within here, not using the registers so much, but actually using the parameters and guiding it back and forth like this. This is just how I found it was easier because then you you I, I retain complete control of the movement instead of sort of relying on, oh, at, it reached a certain condition and now it goes to the store location. That's just my preference. Then it will drop off all we have at the home location and then it will move into the range. And I'm this. There's a little star over here because it's a depreciated, deprecated uh, move command. I have to use this because it doesn't. The the new one at the current moment doesn't work. It's been uh, reported, but if you just use the move and the move is the last command in in here before it loops over, it doesn't work. 
but if I use the move unit in range, then it does work to that location. Then it will stay in that command until it reaches the location. And, and that's just important for us because what happens is that it, it works in the, in the location, it picks up the item, it goes back. And then I don't want to start over the next loop from the home. I want to start the next loop from the ruin that we just discovered. So that's the, the one we have here. That's the command. So let's, uh, we can't even see that because we don't have that, uh, that condition yet, but we'll see the whole thing when it, it uh, gets going. Um, I can, let's actually show the case, the other case while it's working. So first it scans for enemies, then it scans for ruins. It finds a ruin up here. Then it goes over there, interacts with it, realizes that it needs an infected circuit board. It does that actually from a distance. Then it checks something, whether it's in the, the network, it is in the network. It gets a circuit inbound. It solves that one. It goes a little bit quick here. Then it realizes that it needs to go for the next one. It it waits now for the next one to come in and we're just waiting for the next one to come in. When the next one comes in, then we will try uh, resolving it. And then we get to the part where we just in, we just uh, walk through the code of that. So we haven't really walked through this code and I see we have uh, the other one coming in here. I'm sure this comes in with a circuit board for us. So right now it's just on a wait command. So now it waits, waits like a, I don't know, like a minute or a half a minute or something. And then uh, once it uh, it goes through the next, uh, the wait cycle, then it actually, com there we go. Now it tries to complete it. It completed it, picked up everything from the location. And now it's on the part where it says drop off items. It'll go back and drop off the items at the home location. The home location is one of these junk locations that I have a junk storage that I have set up and explained in one of the previous videos. And so that's good. Then it goes in here. Then it moves back this move command unit before it starts the next loop. It'll go back to this one, which is now a solved, solved location. And then it will start over the loop for the next one. Let's see. And once it reaches move unit, and then it starts radar and it starts moving, moving about. It doesn't find anything. And now it goes into a scouting pattern, scout again, find anything, scout pattern. And then it continues in the scout pattern. Let's uh, look at the code while it's in the scout pattern and uh, explain the stuff that we saw here. So if it goes to a solvable, then, oh, we actually got into finding something, didn't we? Yes, it found something there. So we got in, the first one is already uh, unlocked, but it's missing an item. So what happens now, it realizes that it is not inside the, the network. So it goes back home into the network and it's trying to be delivered, but it's too fast to scout. Uh, that's just the way it is. So it now moves all the way back to its waiting position. It doesn't unload thing. And then it just stands here and waits because this is guaranteed to be in the logistics network. And then it gets delivered the item. Now that it has the item, it goes back out to uh, the ruins that was exploring it. That goes back to the solve explorable because it now has that location. And once it reaches out to the explorable, then and These it access devices even uh, completed a new matrix. new thing here they can hold and now it has found some stuff but like a data cube matrix and it found some energized plate it takes those back home it still has this icon uh, because it doesn't need to it doesn't have that um, available or it it doesn't it hasn't been reset yet that one which is fine it'll be reset soon enough there and then it does moves back to the ruin again. And yes, you might think like that's an awful lot of movement back and forth. Yes, but this is the thing like there are maybe like 50 ruins on the map in, in wherever we can see. And once you have this one going, even though it takes a couple of minutes back and forth, it doesn't matter. Uh, once you played for four hours, it'll done everything. And then it starts getting into trouble. And here, now it starts the new loop and it starts scanning, goes into, it has already found another location. Damn, that was quick. Let's uh, go through the, the loop here on what it does. So it tries to solve the explorable. Then it goes into a request item because it says what is missing. Then it requests the item that's missing. Then it checks whether it's inside the electrical grid or not. If it is inside the grid, if the full is inside a grid, it just jumps, you can see here, it just bypasses that one. And then it just sits and wait until the stuff comes in. Until, um, if it's not in the network, then it copies the location, the home location into the go to location. This is what we saw. Then then it will be like, if you are not in the grid, go home. So it goes home, 
and then it waits. Um, it doesn't actually wait, but it, then it counts. How many does it have? Does it have enough? If it does not have enough, count how many required items are in inventory. It actually solved one while we were just looking. Now it's going back. You can see the code is up here. It has solved another one while I was just explaining the code. Look at that, juicy stuff. Um, then here, it'll count basically, do we have the items needed? This is not actually the compare. It just says count how many we actually have in our inventory. And then this is then where we compare is the required amount in inventory. It compares what we want, uh, what we what is missing in the ruin, and what we got. Compare those two. If they're equal or well smaller, that means we actually have enough. Then you go to the ruin. If you don't have it, then we know now that you are either on your way back to the base into the electric network, or you're in the electric network and just sit and wait. Therefore, we go into a ruin or a wait mode and we wait for 60 ticks. And once the 60 ticks is over, then we just go back, or go back all the way back here, here, not all the way back to the solvers solve part, but we're just going to go back here, checking again and going in here, copy, count the items, compare the numbers and wait some more and wait some more and wait some more. This is where we are now in the code. It's waiting for an infected circuit board. And now it's just sitting here waiting. You can see here and then it checks the numbers. Nope. And then it waits again. And then it starts checking numbers in a bit and confirms now that it has one and it wants to have one and come on check 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 it now confirms that it has what it needs and then it goes into the solve into back into solving it because it has sort of run the loop down here into that location it then goes to here and says go to the active ruin and then loop back and try to solve the active ruin which is what we see at this point it goes out here into the ruin and tries to solve it let's follow this all the way up And it's here. It's solved. It picks up the items. Now it realizes there's one more thing that it needs for the second half of it. We can actually go up here and oh, we can't check it. We can just see that. Oh, right. This is solved, but this one is not solved. That's why. Um, let's see. Eight and in. So we follow it. So now it's inside our logistics network and waiting for the delivery. That delivery is coming here, but unfortunately it's not fast enough. And park. Get it, wait for the the cycle here. Let's go have a look. It's waiting. And then we see that it loops back. There, it loops back. And then it realizes now it has the items and then it goes to the move command and then it starts solving it. Brilliant, huh? I think that's pretty damn good. And I've tested this for quite a while and then after that reset, so I could get the ruins back for for um, for this uh, this video, but it uh, it just works. It, it just goes back and forth and you don't have to attend to it. I'm also putting a little solar cell here and a capacitor so that if it's out roaming for a long time, it can replenish itself. There we go. Another ruin has been solved. And uh, yeah, I am. I can also guarantee you that there are some of these code parts here that are redundant <laughs> for sure. But um, they, uh, I, I can't really, I've moved, the, I've removed a few redundant nodes, but um, some of them, are still probably there um, and that's perfectly fine uh, I leave it as an exercise to the to the viewer to uh, optimize the code if you feel like it I'm just gonna leave it here so that if you are uh, copying this you can you can copy it from here and then I'm gonna just leave it over at this location for the second half of it as well so you can do a screenshot and copy it here if you want to do that of course the easier way and also the way that you support the channel is uh, by uh, getting it from patreon and uh, then you can get a safe game where you can whether you have this one uh, just using this opportunity here for um, uh, for safe games in terms of that uh, there are a couple of ways of doing that loading a safe game you can load the safe game you can find this unit and then you can go in here and you can just copy this code uh, if you want to or you can basically by saving it by taking it here copy this code or what you can do is take the profile.sav uh, then, and then load it up. But that contains all of my blueprints. But if you copy it in and overwrite all of your own ones, then that's going to be a problem. So this is kind of weird. You decided to go in here in the middle of the blighted area. That's kind of funny that you want to do that. You could give it a blight protection if uh, if you had anticipated that. But it's on a scouting uh, pattern. Somehow the scouting pattern actually works in here. If I started moving, it wouldn't work. But apparently scout works inside the blighted area. What do you know? 
Uh, hopefully it will, um, if it finds some enemies in here, it'll also notify us as well. Uh, but it's uh, it's actually cool. There you go. It's scanned, but it didn't find anything. Uh, then it's just continue the scouting pattern. It's pretty neat that scouting pattern works through the blight, despite the fact that it normally doesn't work through the blight. So we learned something new there that it actually uh, scouting pattern and then it scans for enemies and then scans for anything else and then goes continue on the scouting pattern. Once it comes out, it's probably going to find some new regions out here. These ones are ready to be explored. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time for it to uh, to go through this area and uh, because it moves extremely slowly in here but hey it moves and that's all there is to it so i hope that this was useful uh, for you in terms of, uh, of now solving all of the ruins in an automatic way maybe you uh, do prefer to do it manually but for me it was like i kind of lost track of it and i kind of forgot about it and then moving back and then going back and requesting it was just too much work and i knew that at some point i would optimize it so that's what i have done now i've optimized it and now i just have this little one and i don't care about it it'll even tell me if it's and if it's heading for trouble so that is now something you can build as well so hope you enjoyed it if you did be sure to hit the like button i will see you guys in the next episode until then take care and as always stay effective